There. The stream is live. You guys, have you um, put us in your pocket? Have you gone and subscribed to our podcast? Have you done that? Put us right there or in your fanny pack, in your backpack, in your purse. <laughs> Just put us wherever so you can watch <laughs> us later. But you got to click the subscribe button and do that. You should don't do put that. us in it like somewhere inappropriate though. Mm -mm. If you can I just mean, not listen, I'm not against you know. it. If <laughs> as long as so, you your pocket have us, is one thing, it's but fine. <laughs> whatever. Whatever. It's the weekend. Go crazy. Go what? crazy, you what? guys. You guys, um, point of personal privilege, if I Please. may. It is my 16th wedding anniversary. Woo! Wait, I'm trying to make celebration things happen on Woo! my side. Where's the balloons? You need to like have the I don't balloons know. going. Oh, then, we got this. <laughs> it's a concert. <laughs> yeah, very excited. Well, I forget how to do. I forget how to make things, make but the, I can do this. Yeah, the hearts are good. I so happy anniversary, Greg. I love you very much. We have made, people didn't think we were going to make it, but look at us go. Looks like we made it. Look how far we come, my baby. So right after this, we're going to go do something. I don't know what it is. He's surprising me with something, and I hope it involves bacon <laughs> same mm -hmm. right same mm -hmm. are we bacon. gonna talk about pillows oh crap oh my god i'm so sorry <laughs> i'm sorry i was thinking about bacon you guys i get i, I get really i get really sidetracked i get really add when i start thinking about bacon but you guys should visit mypillow.com slash chicks and use code chicks um, get some slides, especially dudes, because dude right. white slides are only nine fifty. I should get some for my husband. I think he the women's not. white slides sold out. Like, because we talked about them, and then yeah. people were like, "What?" I and think then they're our, gone. Our people actually bought all of them, which is a great <laughs> thing. Too. Yeah, <laughs> but they uh, the other colors, which um black. You, you definitely need a pair of black slides for the for the summer, spring, summer. Yeah, dudes bucks. like those. I have a I have the black pair, and they are very pillowy. So, I mean, I'm not kidding when I say that they're very pillowy, but definitely get your dude or dudes out there. Get some white slides, which is $9.50. MyPillow.com slash chicks. Use code chicks. Do it. Do it. Sorry, bacon. Bacon <laughs> on the brain. <laughs> Eugene Heiger, thank you very much. He says, happy anniversary, Daisy. Love you, gal. That's what he said. Thank you. <laughs> uh, a few things to mention. Oh, can I show my dog's picture? Because it yes. was so cute. Very you cute. Very we didn't do any prep this morning. I mean, it's just, we were crying about kids and like, Oh my God, there was so much crying talking about anniversaries and then this, and then she showed me this picture. Oh my. So you guys, you know that I've shown you like how Ella sleeps in the crate. Um, sometimes or Maisie sleeps into the crate. Some, they never sleep in it together because they, you know, they're, they like each other, but I feel like they don't want us to know that they like each they other want their space. But right now at this very moment. I can confirm this is what they look like. Oh no. Oh my gosh. <laughs> are at, they not the cutest? Look at Maisie with her emotionless stare. It's <laughs> uh, <laughs> zero emotion, that dog. <laughs> just, I cannot, She's like, I've never, am I I've sad? never seen them do this. Am I angry? Am I sad? I don't know. You're never going to know because I'm Maisie. You're never going to know. Never she probably know. is actually a little irritated right now <laughs> at having to share. <laughs> but you're never going to know. You're never going to know exactly. Yeah, you're just not going to know exactly. Uh -huh. Laura Kate Baker also says, happy anniversary, Daisy. Love you, chicks Thank and you. family. <laughs> it's so Thank nice. Thank you so much. Um, okay, just a couple things. Pelosi has a new memoir coming out. So <laughs> wa or walk, don't run. <laughs> yes. <laughs> to your nearest bookstore Shuffle, to pick up one of those. Run. Shuffle to your bookstore. <laughs> buys this oh my gosh just i can't just self-loathing democrats that's who buys this crap oh my god like, oh the nancy pelosi autobiography is out i get to learn all about her 14 dollar ice cream <laughs> <laughs> oh muffy let's get it <laughs> if god, it's not people. a book filled with how to buy stocks it's not worth I, it exactly. like I, if she's got stock <laughs> tips in there maybe it's worth it other than yeah, that Mm -mm. St the stock tips on cheating basically <laughs> yeah i want to know all about yeah i want to know all about her husband and that he's dude. there apparently yeah that it's in there like apparently Re there's a big bunch that's what is, is it really that, that's what we hear allegedly the, the whole the story truth, is in there well the truth is in there ridiculous. okay they should label this as fiction because i'm sure right. she's making most of it up <laughs> totally 
Yeah. Um, but also, we, <laughs> you and I like were basically sending us sending each other the same article at the same time yesterday. Yes. When we discovered that the crazy plain lady who said that mf'er isn't real, you remember that her, Tiffany Gomez? Mother isn't real. <laughs> I'm telling you I, right, I, now. right now. <laughs> remember. You guys remember? She has unfortunately become a right wing influencer. Mm. Are we going to claim her, her on our gonna... side? Oh, why do we have to do this? Why? I don't want her. I don't. Uh, it's, and of course, she's not... getting paid. She's getting paid to hawk right wing products. This is what we do in this world. Can we just, can we <laughs> just? Like, why? No. And then, in the words of Nancy Kerrigan, why? <laughs> why? I mean, listen, we also have sponsors. I'm, I'm fine with the it's, hawking it's of true. products. <laughs> <laughs> but, unless, unless you're plain lady, <laughs> right? I, then, I just I was hoping that she would be on the other side of the aisle because yeah. I don't want that kind of crazy. But alas, she's one of ours. So I mean, I guess yeah. Okay, she's I guess she's one of ours. Yeah. <laughs> unless she's just grifting and is ju and is just pretending to be on the right because that's, it makes more money. I don't know. That's the thing. It's it, there's a possibility that happens sometimes too. I mean, it's yeah. like, oh, hey, here's an opportunity to make some money. I think I'm going to wear a, a red, white and blue bikini and sell <laughs> some right-wing beer and then Well, the beer is, came out and said, "No, the, she just likes our beer. We had nothing to do with this." Oh my actually. god, really? Yeah. It's not like that was not a product placement or anything. She just likes their beer. And so they didn't, they claim they did not pay her for that. It's just that she liked it and just decided to pose in a bikini with it. That's what okay, they said. Well, that's weird. That's, that's she just really... wants to, I think she was more trying to show the body than her she body. Was the beer. Yeah. yeah. And, and which is nice. Saying, I mean, it's a nice body. Yeah. She's got a great body, but she was probably like, Hey, here's my body. I have some beer. This is what I'm capable of doing. Any takers? Yes, that's probably exactly right. She is a marketing person, so she knows how to do that. So mm -hmm. perhaps that's what she was doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, oh my God, that's so funny. Melissa said, that sponsorship is not real. <laughs> <laughs> That's so I great. love that. It's and so great. Leslie L. Leslie yeah. L. said, "Mock, were you crying about your seniors' cap and gown delivery this week? I did last night. Oh, we oh my were, God, Daisy and I were crying that. literally before the show started. We were, we about, were both crying. Our, it's growing up. I mean, we were. It's out of this control. Is, like everything right. is. We're not prepared. Control. We're not. It's going to be the best show ever. We're not. <laughs> it's always great when we're not entirely prepared. We're uh, winging it, you guys." totally yeah. winging it. Cynthia Brady, thank you very, very much for that st super sticker. And I don't know if you guys uh, have even noticed, because I don't know why you would, but perhaps you have, that we are decked out today in some grunt style gear. And uh, this is for Mother's Day. So my sweatshirt says, Mom. <laughs> Mine says, I brought you into this world and I can take you out. Which is exactly, <laughs> I would totally say that, you guys. You so would like totally say that. Perfect shirt for me. And even Perfect. though this is more geared to moms of younger kids, on underneath my sweatshirt, I have this T-shirt that says, no, <laughs> we have that at home. <laughs> and then there's another one just like this that says, this is why I can't have nice things. <laughs> and they I have it's also, such great stuff for so Mother's cute. Day, you guys. So cute. Such great stuff. And you can go to gruntstyle.com. You can click on Mother's Day or you can just click on the women's section for more of their Mother's Day gear. And don't forget, if you are a repeat customer, you still can you you can still get 10% off your order just because you're a Chicks audience member by using code CHICKS10. New customers, if you're brand new, if you've never got something from Grunt Style before, now's a great time, three weeks, I think, until Mother's Day. So get yourself something, get your mom in your life <laughs> something. New customers, if you use code CHICKS15, CHICKS15, you'll get 15% off of your order. So it's a great time to stock up, to get your gifts out of the way for Mother's Day, because these are great. Now, one thing we wanted to make sure of is if you're got, if you're buying t-shirts, women's t-shirts, they size. run super small. Yeah, size up. It's like junior sizes, ladies. Okay. Yeah. So size up. 
Like, because this he... T-shirt, and I don't even have giant boobs, you guys, but this T-shirt is a large. Okay, yeah. so make sure that you size size a couple sizes up, maybe if yeah. you like, you know, a looser fitting T-shirt. This is sweatshirts mine... are are fine. Sweatshirts yeah. like run I think normal. Mine's a medium, but I'm on the A team, and I'm telling you, like you, you may <laughs> size up. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so word to the wise for that. Gruntstyle.com is the website. So hope that you guys stock up because they are fantastic sponsors of ours and we appreciate them a whole Love big bunch. Them. Oh my gosh. Uh, so many thank yous. Uh, Paula Johnson, thank you very much for the super sticker. She says, My dear dad passed away one year ago today, two months shy of 96. Oh my gosh. Wow. She what says, My life. heart breaks all over again. He was a good man. I have great memories of all of our times together. Happy anniversary, Daisy. Oh thank my you. gosh. 96. God bless you. That sounds like a good, 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 good long life. Yes. Um, Alexandra, thank you so much. Alexandra says, happy anniversary, Daisy. I hope you got my gift. Chocolate does make the heart grow fonder. And in Croatia, it's how we show appreciation. I did. Thank you so very much. And my daughter was munching on it last night. She was like, this is so cool. It's from Croatia. <laughs> she goes, I think it tastes better than American chocolate. I'm like, well, really? I mean, probably yeah, well, she, that's what she was saying. I, I think it's because it's one, I think it's because it's so cool. The packaging was really cool. And two, I told her, I go, it probably has less preservatives and stuff in it. Maybe. So there's a Maybe. case there. Yeah. So thank you so much. It was very sweet and thoughtful of you. So, so sweet. Mm -hmm. And Jamie Hill. Thank you. Jamie says, my oldest just got her license. All the feels, fellow mamas. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the gosh. milestones, man. They're tough. They yes. are tough. So tough. Uh, also, a couple other notes. RFK Jr. has <laughs> now achieved ballot access in... Michigan, which is a big, big deal. And mm -hmm. you know that Biden is not happy about that. Yeah. Oh, a lot man. of Democrats. A lot of Democrats. Especially in Michigan, where they're already so mad uh -huh. at Biden. So oh but hurt. Anyway, that's good news for Trump. Uh, very, very good news for Trump. And mm -hmm. then lastly, uh, apparently there's some hullabaloo about the fact that Taylor Swift's new album is out. And the hullabaloo, as I understand it, is that, um, you know, her, the Swifties have been losing their minds with anticipation about the album. <laughs> but then now there's some of them are mad at her because they like pre-bought what they thought was a version of the new album, like the second that they could. And then a couple hours later, she was like, guess what? Surprise. It's really a double album. Like and then there 13, were like 13 more tracks. Yeah, then there was a bunch more tracks. And so mm -hmm. I can think that there, there's some Swifties who are mad about that, but yeah. like, whatever. I gotta say, listen, I'm not a fan of hers. My daughter and I were talking about her last night because my daughter's 14 and she likes her music. Yeah. And um, and I'm like, I, I will say, I'll give it to her. She's been touring and doing all sorts of stuff over the past year or two. How does she have the time to write a whole new album? I mean, because she's been doing, she's been dating a dude. She's been... I will give it up to her. That's a lot She's of work. enormously talented. Even I if mean, you don't I, like her music, right. I think you can appreciate how talented I do. she is. I, I will say that that I, I will give it up to her. That's hard to do. It's hard to do all of that stuff. So I I can't stand her either, Michelle, but <laughs> I will give her props for her work ethic. I will. Oh that, yeah. She works. You don't see a lot of that in that generation these days. And um, there's that. Yeah, that's I mean, a it's lot true. of work. And there's apparently she teased out something on Instagram, like a <laughs> countdown of some sort. And so now the Swifties are like, oh, it's like teasing another album, um, which means that she's possibly already working on that or already has songs like in the tank for that one as well. I mean, she just cannot stop. Can't yeah. stop, won't stop. It's kind of yeah. amazing, really. It, it's yeah, work ethic. I'll give her a thumbs up. Mm -hmm. I can't my my thumbs up doesn't do what yours does, but. There you go. <laughs> uh, yeah. Swamp Saga City. Thank you. Um, they say books by politicians are money, money laundering schemes. They are bought in bulk by wealthy supporters to avoid donation limits. Oh, <gasps> I didn't know that. <laughs> I Happy did Friday. not know that. There you go. Mm -hmm. But that makes it's, so much sense. There's so many money laundering schemes in and co like Congress and Washington. It's just what it's, it's just Washington is one of... big, it's all one big money laundering scheme, isn't it? With our money and they just yeah. use it to fund all the money laundering schemes. I hate all of them. 
Oh my God. Hate, mm -hmm. hate, hate, hate. Um, okay. So those are really just the little tidbits I wanted to get to before we get into videos. And I have just one standalone video <laughs> about some news that came overnight. And that is that Israel has retaliated <sighs> to a degree. Um, so there, there were actually some, they, I, I think they fired like 300 missiles or something, very specific targets in, within the country of Iran, um, very specific military targets near nuclear facilities, but not at nuclear facilities. There were some people on Twitter who were like, this is super lame. This is like a feeble show of power, but the overwhelming majority of folks see this as more of a of a message from Israel to Iran saying, see how targeted we can be. Just watch yourself. <laughs> that's that. <laughs> that's what they're, that's how they're interpreting it. Here is a report uh, from Fox news about and it. Again, this is part of a coordinated effort to deescalate the situation across the region. Mm -hmm. It gives the Iranians the ability to save face. The Israelis, the ability to send a message to the Islamic Republic that they have their nuclear mm -hmm. facilities in sight and they can strike at will and also the Americans mm. a chance to try and bring the Israelis to a conversation that will let them continue their operation inside Gaza, de-escalate tensions on the northern border with Iran's largest proxy across the region, Hezbollah, and stop this round of exchange between Iran and Israel following that massive attack last weekend. And, and very quickly, Trey, you were telling us last time. Anyway. That's that's the message that uh, that they were so sending. Israel was like, "Screw you, Biden." Yeah, essentially, mm -hmm. don't tell us what to do. As the don't tell us, yeah, as the raccoon says. says, yeah. <laughs> what does the raccoon say? <laughs> what does the raccoon say? <laughs> Screw you, Biden. <laughs> that's what he says. Yeah, he uh -huh. says that, and he also says, "Don't tell me what to do." Yeah, uh -huh. both. Yeah. So anyway, that has happened. Uh, we'll see. It, so far, Iran is not, you know, losing their minds like they normally do and saying, we're going to retaliate and we're going to use weapons that are going to wipe you off the face of the planet. It seems like that message may have been received and received well, potentially, I hope, because we don't want this to escalate. But in some ways, it also should send a message like cut it out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, that uh, happened last night um i know we have some more thank yous my gosh you guys gcqc thank you she says happy anniversary to daisy and greg may you have many many more thank elizabeth you. boyer says happy anniversary daisy and greg my younger son turned 25 on the 16th i'm not old enough to have sons who are 25 and 26 I don't know, rub it in right i don't know. rub that in happy birthday <laughs> Love you, chicks. And Brandy Phillips says, uh, happy anniversary, Amy Jo. And today is also my baby girl's 27th birthday, who I had at age 27. Oh, my gosh. Happy That's birthday awesome. to her. Yes, 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 yes. Thanks, Thanks you guys. Uh, there was some drama uh, with respect to Trump's trial, the hush money trial. Jur like two jurors. One voluntarily left, one was removed uh, from the jury pool. And so we have a couple stories about that. The jury now has been selected, but it took some doing. Um, and so here is the report about the first juror who bowed out. OK, now the judge came in, uh, Juan Merchan. He took the bench. He greeted the parties then realized there was no court reporter and said, quote, that's not good. Uh, so while we await the counsel uh, now at the bench yesterday, the court uh, received a call from juror number two after sleeping on it overnight. Mm. And by the way, we're learning this for the first time you are at home, right? She apparently has concerns about being fair and balanced, mm. and uh, they're bringing her now in to be questioned. So for a moment there, like, like Monday looked like it was going to be sticky, right? Then Tuesday, everybody thought, whoa, this process could happen a lot smoother than we think. Mm -hmm. And then after having an off day yesterday, we'll see how they do today. But well, that this has to do with uh, something that, that very well could have been the fact that this juror may have been arrested uh, back in the 1990s, uh, conducting oh some type of political vandalism against something, uh, <laughs> posters on the right. And it was not revealed or he did not remember it and did not include it. And that is why that juror has been dismissed. God, he was right. unhinged in the 90s. Right.
I mean, that think of how unhinged he is now if he was that unhinged in the 90s. I mean, we were pretty tame in the 90s. Holy <laughs> cow. Oh, my God. <laughs> These people are lunatics. Well, I mean, it's the district, right? This is this is what that district is like. People and never, so, ever get a yeah. fair trial, ever. No, he absolutely won't. I mean, no. I think everybody should just brace themselves for the fact that he is going to get convicted. Hopefully oh that's God. overturned on appeal, but I, there's no way that they're not going to convict him in this, which is so ridiculous because all the top lawyers say that this case, ha it holds no water. So it's all it's nonsense, just, but it will, it will totally embolden him. I hope so. I hope so. Mm -hmm. uh, but ultimately, this did end with the 12 jurors getting picked. I think that they also have their six alternates. Um, they may even want to double up on those alternates just because if this is the way it's going to go, I don't, I don't know, man. Things are sketch for that trial. But that's where we are uh, right now with that. God, what a bunch of lunacy this is. Isn't it? It yeah. just really, really is. It's like we're living in a completely different country. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, that is true. Uh, you guys, I continue to be absolutely mad about the seafood from OmahaSteaks.com. And I don't even know if they're going to be mad at me for pushing seafood over their delicious steaks. Because I am not saying there's anything wrong with the steaks. I love me. <laughs> I like the steaks. steaks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I am obsessed right now with their seafood. I cannot stop eating it. This week, I made flounder. And I made uh, swordfish. Look at you. We had two seafood dinners this week from omahasteaks.com. And the first night I had the cheesy potatoes as the side. And then the second night with the swordfish, we had those uh, pepper jack risotto cake yes. balls, like yes. those risotto. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. I'm just going to buy. I think like one of my subscription orders, I'm just going to replace it and just get all pepper jack risotto. <laughs> just, <get, laughs> just have them all the time. All the time. Oh, my God. Best side. Ever. ever it really is so oh, good mm -hmm. so good so right now huge if you've never bought from omahasteaks.com just i don't even know like i the, i don't know what else to do to she's convince judging you. you she's judging you it's fine <laughs> a little bit i am judging you just a little bit especially right now when they've got their whole 50 percent off site-wide sale this is what their semi-annual site-wide sale so you already get 50 percent off and then because you watch our show and you know our code when you use code chicks you'll get an additional 30 dollars off your order so, so you guys just go try and even if you it, don't like seafood just try the sides try the steaks try everything yep. And it makes it all so easy. Just grab oh. it out of the freezer, put it in the air fryer, and you have dinner. And for somebody who's split. dumb like me in the kitchen, you can make dinner <laughs> for people. It's great. You can. Anyone can. Mm -hmm. Right. OmahaSteaks.com. Check it out immediately. <laughs> and you guys, there are more things. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Sherry Vieira. Sherry says, happy anniversary, Daisy. Today is also my hubby Jim's birthday. Happy and birthday. Sunday is our 34th anniversary. Oh, my gosh. Happy anniversary. <laughs> happy birthday and happy anniversary to Jim from Sherry. Thank you very much. Thank Leslie you. Quiltz says, happy anniversary. She says, I hope you can buy some bacon with my super chat. Oh, yeah. Yells. Thank you. <laughs> Lori McCoy, thank you. She says, happy anniversary to the Clarks. C. Douglas mm -hmm. says, happy anniversary, Daisy and Greg. May you have many, many more. Thank, thank you, guys. guys. So sweet. Thank you. So, so, so sweet. Okay, let's get to, I mean, we all know, because we. I think we talked about this yesterday or the day before, about how the Senate dismissed the articles of impeachment against Mayorkas, so he's <laughs> not getting kicked out. He's there to stay, unfortunately. But he could not escape a good grilling from uh, some senators about Lake and Riley and specifically what led to the illegal who murdered her to be here illegally and to stay here and to be able to murder yeah, her. He's a big fat liar. Oh, my God. Big fat liar. And so he's given very, very. Um, uh, what's the word? It, sketchy reports on what he actually did and did not do. But like he said one thing and that, um, what's the word when it's like, it doesn't match conflicting. There you go. <laughs> God, <laughs> she needs, she's bone frog. You guys, <laughs> he's been giving very conflicting testimonies about why that particular yeah, murderer. He's a, he's a freaking liar. Here. He's a liar. liar. Yeah. Yeah. And Josh Holly was not oh God, having this it. This was stunning. I love this, this whole exchange. 
make sure to listen to the dig at the very end of this clip because mm -hmm. it was everything. So this is your policies in action, Mr. Secretary. A criminal is permitted into this country on grounds flatly not permitted, flatly contradictory to the statute. He commits a crime against a child, and then he gets a work permit. He gets a work permit. You want to know why all of the jobs in the last two or three years have gone to illegal migrants? Working people in this country can't get a job. Their unemployment rate's high. Why? Because of things like this. And then what's he do? Well, we all know that in February, he commits the heinous crime against Lake and Riley. Is this a record that you are proud of? Um, uh, Senator, um, you've misstated some facts. I have read from the parole file, which you have said you don't recall, don't have, you miscited. I'm reading from it. It is right here. And I've just, pursuant to the speech and debate clause, I have just read it into the record. And the reason is you have lied repeatedly to Congress mm -hmm. and to the American people about this, they deserve to know. And the only way they're going to know is if I tell them. <laughs> I've just told them. It's in the record now. I've read it verbatim from the parole file. Verbatim. I just want to know, why did you change your story so often? Why didn't you just answer honestly to Congressman Bishop and Senator Britt? Senator, I am, I am confident that justice will be vindicated in the criminal prosecution of the case. Well, hopefully he'll get more of a trial than you got. Otherwise, there'll be no justice for anyone at all. Oh, damn. Yeah, Snap is right. Like, I, <laughs> the thing is, if I lied to Congress, wouldn't I go to jail? Wouldn't I? I thought that that was, I, I thought that that was an offense mm -hmm. that could get you in jail. Right. But if you're, you're Mayor, if you're Mayorkas or if you're Fauci, you don't. Mm -hmm. You're uh, apparently, you know, like Democrats are always screaming, nobody's above the law. Yeah, bullshit. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Democrats seen, are apparently. We've seen a lot of people on that side of the aisle who are apparently above the law. Yeah, and he's yep. one of them. This guy is a disgrace. I just, it makes my blood boil. He lied. Same. Put his butt in jail. Put him in jail. <laughs> oh and God. the word wasn't even conflicting. It was contradictory. That's the word yes. that I couldn't find. That I was, was just that. like, where is we it? Like, it's right there. When she does that. It's right there. It's right it's there. Right there. Thank you guys. Because so many people piped in and they were like, the word like, you're looking for. <laughs> oh gosh. Contradictory. I don't know why I could not find it. It was it swirling happens. around in there. Yeah, it happens. Uh, Suzette Paramore just sent Venmo and said, happy anniversary, Daisy. Hope my Thank favorite you. chicks have a lovely weekend. Uh, she, it's from Suzette in Tallahassee. Thank you. Very, 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 very sweet. sweet. Just can't. I hope I've gotten everybody. Have I gotten everybody? Yes, I think I have. Okay. All right. And then Rand Paul, uh, speaking of Fauci, Rand Paul had an opportunity to also say some things to Mayorkas. And so he took every advantage. Right here. All of the laws that existed under the Trump administration still exist under the Biden administration. You have all the powers that you need. The laws on on accepting migrants migrants to this country says the ex the executive may admit migrants. Doesn't say the executive branch shall admit migrants. You can simply say we're full up. And we've got too many criminals, and we've got the horrendous thing that happened to Lake and Riley and to others. <laughs> And we're just full and we're just we're going to stop taking migrants for a while until we can sort out the mess we have at the border. You have every power to do that now. You just don't utilize those powers. But it isn't about really being good at utilizing the power. We just think you're not obeying the law. And I think it is a sad day. Yesterday was a sad day that we had to impeach a member of the cabinet. But today is a sad day that the majority chose not to even hear the arguments, not to see the proof one way or the other and have a real trial. So. I look forward to trying to get some of the answers today, and I hope you will tell the truth. I hope you will not just simply say, I don't know. You've been asked many times about Lake and Riley's family. You should know everything about the alleged murderer, and I hope you'll explain to us how he got into this country and why that happened. He did not. That guy is pure evil. Pure evil. Mm hmm. Absolutely. I mean, right. There's just no other explanation for what he's done and what he continues to do. Pure freaking evil. Look at his face. I mean, his face. Right? Yeah. Oh, my his God. Face. That face. Oh, it's infuriating. Mm -hmm. infuriating. I want karma. Where's karma? Where is it? Come on. Yeah, karma. That's what I'm always asking you because you always promise that it's coming. I know. I, I know it's coming, but do your job. Where are you? <laughs> 
<laughs> Molly B. Thank you. Molly B. says, off to my last radiation treatment for stage three breast cancer. Y'all have been with me every day for the last nine months. Great hair after chemo. Thanks to HC Hair SNN. Molly, oh my gosh, best of luck in that last treatment. So glad it's the last totally. one. Totally. So, Everybody so like glad. prayers going up. Mm hmm. Karen Elliott. Thank you. Karen says, is it me or does Mayorkas look like Marshall Applewhite, the leader of Heaven's Gate cult? Oh, my oh gosh. Oh, my so gosh. Much. Yes. <laughs> yes. She says, we need the comet to take this nut bar back. Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. That totally. is a great comparison. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then Gay Olson Obraslinski uh, on Venmo said happy anniversary to the Clarks. Thank you, Gay. God crazy um okay then i need to show you this screenshot because there was a very interesting like city council meeting in new york city where a bunch of illegals got to come and say we don't like the food we need better housing mm -hmm. even on ramadan we couldn't eat during breaks because the food isn't good enough right and then after two months we have to find a place to stay because you guys aren't paying for it anymore like some of them are like, we have to actually, we, they make us go and find some, some places to go stay. Like what we're on our own. Like what, what is that about? Aren't you going to pay for us forever? Oh my this God. This makes me see. Oh my God. I can't. And then, so a bunch of them got a chance to plead their case, to demand that we pay for more of their shit. And one of these people was like, listen, we really need to have a translator for every single possible uh, illegal language, because otherwise, how are we going to give them their free stuff if we don't if we can't even communicate with them? Oh this God. one woman who was talking about it actually said there are over, I don't know, like something crazy, like over 50, 500 something languages in just the Congo. And so she's actually expecting United States taxpayers to pony up and pay for individual translators for of all course. of those languages. Of course she is. Of course that liberal is expecting that. Mm -hmm. oh I'm sorry, God. that commie, that commie, <laughs> that Marxist commie liberal is expecting us to do that. Of course. Course. I would not have believed it had I not heard her say it out of her own face. Mm -hmm. And so you guys are going to also hear it. He's from East Africa. Face. My mommy speaks Arameric. My dad don't speak Arameric. He don't even understand it. I do because my mom is Arameric, so I do. But in, only in the Congo, you have like more, more than 500 languages. Swahili is, is, is being spoken in, in Burundi, so I can speak with somebody from Burundi, oh but my God. I cannot speak Swahili with somebody from Mauritania. Mm. You understand? Uh, 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 in Europe, a Turkish don't talk for a French. A French don't talk for a, Sp a Spanish. So why it is that you will put everybody, everybody in Africa in the same bag and thinking that because they speak Asanya, because they speak Puel, everybody will understand. You see, I told you Akuna Matata, you couldn't understand anything. You see, so that's, that's what we need. We need people that speak the native language to teach to those people. No. That's what we're asking the city, and the city refused to acclimat. Oh and my. Since to get out. Get I out, can't, get I out, just, get out, get out. I get can't. Out. She speaks good enough English. Seriously. And she's bitching about the fact that like other people can't understand. I'm sorry, GTFO. <laughs> GTFO. Oh my God. Uh, and she, what? Like is that, somebody it's else like, pointed out, was she wearing garlic? Like I, a necklace looked like, of garlic? It looked like an like a elephant tampon. That's what it looked like. <laughs> but I'd like to say this. What was it? Is that what that was? What? <laughs> that looks like a gar like the thing that you get at the grocery store with the garlic. <laughs> right? That's Just, what that looks like. I don't know. I, I went in a completely different direction. I thought maybe it was something <laughs> else. I can I see why you would. I think it looks like an elephant tampon. An elephant tampon. It was it what is that? Somebody says yes, it's garlic. <laughs> like legit? Or it just is looks it? like garlic. Why are you wearing garlic then? I have a question. <laughs> I have so many questions about that. Why would you wear that? Is that yes, I'm a so thing I, in that culture? The, the absolute entitlement of these people is staggering. And this this is the thing. You teach people how to treat you. We have taught these people. We're going to just give you and give you and give you all these things. And they're like, we want more. It's not mm -hmm. good enough. I don't like when your parents came here from Poland, were they like, oh, my God, like if the people here don't speak Polish. So right. I'm going to need a trans. I'm going to need a translator. 
I mean, could you imagine? No, they did not do that. They melted, they assimilated, and they learned English quickly. Mm -hmm. Really quickly. And quickly. in fact, they both speak it better than I do. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> exactly. Because <laughs> my parents are just insanely smart. Like, oh my God. crazy Off smart. the charts. Yeah, her father has a PhD in yeast genetics. Somebody tell me what that is. <laughs> I don't even know. Okay. Yeah. The first time you guys, the first time I met Daisy and brought her to my parents' house to meet them. Um, and she met my dad and we were talking about how crazy smart he is and how he has this PhD and all this stuff. And so I was like, show her, I told my dad, show her <laughs> just the title, just the title alone of one of the papers that you had published. Well, because I, on I, was this topic. I was a medical writer at the time. And so I was right. geeking out over all the things that he had written. And I didn't even understand half of what. I was like, I'm, I was just, I'm so in awe of her dad and her mom for that matter. I mean, but, I, when I read the titles of his papers, I can understand the, and yeah. that's it. <laughs> and I was like, words, oh my God, I'm tell like, me. I'm like, George, tell me more about your paper. Like we were just, we we're all, <laughs> I'm geeking out over, he's just a remarkably brilliant man. And so, yeah. And keep just, in mind when they got here, he, he spoke like the teensy tinesiest bit of English. My mom spoke none at all, or mm -hmm. maybe I have that reversed, but in any case, they did not know the language very well at right. all. And they assimilated. That was what mm -hmm. they wanted to do. They wanted to become Americans. They didn't want to become Polish Americans. They just wanted to be Americans. And that is what they are. Yeah. And that's what people should want to be when they come here. And so when I see this garbage, it makes, it makes me crazy. I know it makes me crazy too. And then there was one woman, one of the council members who was actually reasonable about this and wanted to ask, he, she wanted to push back. She wanted to ask these people, what the hell were you expecting when you came here? Because how much do you think we can give you? And you could tell that the chairwoman was getting irritated and like, was like, do you have a question? Because if not, we're going to move on. Like she didn't want to have to take any accountability against what these people were demanding. And I, right. I cannot, I cannot understand it, but at least, you know what? Thank God for this one woman who was asking the right things. Here she is. In listening to everybody speak and making demands on New York City to do more, more, more. How much more are we supposed to do? How much more are we capable of doing? Yeah. This system is so overworked and overburdened. We don't have the resources that you need to get what you what you need. I mean, your testimonies move me tremendously. I don't want to see anybody mistreated in any sort of way. But I have to ask you, what motivated you to come here thinking the streets are paved with gold? They're not. They're absolutely not, and you're living through that. Now, we've watched many different people come across this border. The people who have come across Council this Member, border you, have come across this border illegally. Council Member Palladino, yes. do you have a question for the I, panel? Because we do. have to move on. We can, yeah, we have to move on from your truth telling. Right? Because you can't be out here, to, you can't be out here talking truth. Hey, why would you have, you're like delivering all the truth bombs. We can't have that. We can't have that. No, we can't mm -hmm. have that. We just got to appease that. these people who feel entitled to all of the taxpayer shit. That's the thing that we got to appease them because they're there. They're there people who feel entitled to all of the things that we're giving them right now. And they are overburdened. We all are overburdened. We can't afford this. And how dare they come into our right? country and, and feel that level of expectation and then say, it's not good enough. How dare they come into my home and say, oh, I'm going to take all the things that you have in here, all your food. I'm going to go to your fridge. I'm going to eat this. I'm going to take this. I'm going to sleep on your couch and then tell you it's not good enough. I need more. I'm sorry. GTFO. Exactly. Exactly. God. The rage that I feel when I watch that. Whew. Oh, I mean, God. I do not condone it's, violence, but it's unreal. <laughs> it's just unbearable. Um, you guys. I just looked outside this morning and I, I dragged my husband outside with me to show him my lilac tree. I <laughs> know I delighted? keep telling you about this. He I mean, like, he's a little bit, uh, he's eye rolling a little bit about he's my in his lilac underwear. tree. <laughs> it's like, 
Seriously, why are we doing this now? But you guys, now when I went out there this morning, there are, uh, I mean, it's very leafy. I and mean, it's a baby. This tree is a baby, okay? But it's very leafy. And it has all of those, like, the beginnings of lilac flowers. You can tell that they are starting to flower. And I feel like I could get as many as 10 flowers. I'm hoping, hoping, hoping that I get them this year because I cannot tell you how much I love them. If you've ever smelled an actual lilac bush it's or awesome. a tree, mm-hmm. oh, so good. Yeah. And I don't do anything to this tree. And it just does the things. This is the this is the kind of stuff you can get from fastgrowingtrees.com. And don't think it's just trees. They have indoor plants, outdoor plants, uh, Uh, fruit trees, flowering trees, bushes, shrubs, like all the supplies that you would need, pots, all the things that you would need to make your home look beautiful with plants, to make your outdoors look beautiful with plants. They have it and they have it all organized in such a way that it's super easy to find, even if you're not like a plant happy kind of person, which I'm not. I'm not typically a person who knows or cares about how to do things like that. And now I am obsessed. (laughs) Now I'm obsessed with watching my lilac tree grow. And this is why they have so many happy customers. They're the biggest online nursery. They are absolutely, they make just all of it so, so easy. And right now, big sales at fastgrowingtrees.com. Plus, when you use code CHICKS, you're going to save an additional 15%. So make sure that you're visiting fastgrowingtrees.com to check out what their latest deals are because they're always doing something, always doing something great. So additional 15% off right now. Now, that's on top of whatever sales that they already have. Fastgrowingtrees.com. Fastgrowingtrees.com. Check it out. You're going to love it. You, you know, know we, it. we had a lot of people like on our YouTube. There was a YouTube clip about, um, I think it was, I don't know, a couple days ago. I said something like, when you import third world countries, you're going to become a third world country. And that, our producer made that into a short YouTube clip. I, I never read the YouTube comments. I never go out there and do that because people on YouTube are, are pretty awful. Yeah, I, God, I've awful. made the mistake of reading some of the comments on YouTube and I just, man, I went into a freaking rage and like, <gasps> it, and yeah, I just started answering a bunch of jackholes out there. Cause they just, cause they're like, you are a xenophobe. You're terrible. Like these people, like they, people in this country think that the, that, that woman that, I mean, I'm assuming that woman came here illegally, you Which know, one? like the woman who was talking and demanding the garlic, the lady with oh, the, the elephant, the lady with the elephant tampon around her neck. Yeah. I don't know her personal story. Okay. But if she in fact was illegal, even if she's legal, but, but if, if she in fact was illegal, which so many of these people are illegal. Now we've got like 10 million illegals running around and they're demanding shit. It's like, mm-hmm. it's, there's a difference. We have been trying to explain to people, and I don't know why it's so hard for Democrats. Is it because they're that dumb? They act like they're the the party of intellectual elitism, but they're so dumb they can't understand the difference between legal and illegal. Right. There's a difference. We're not against legal immigration. We're obviously vehemently <laughs> opposed to illegal immigration. I don't want that at all in my country. I don't want illegals coming into my country. I don't want people breaking the law. I believe in the law. I believe in upholding upholding the law. And so I get so frustrated with people who are out there and they're like, we were built on immigrants. Really? Because I don't remember those immigrants, you know, of the days of yore coming over here and screaming death to America. I don't Mm. remember that. Y'all remember that? And I don't remember them being like, this isn't good enough. I need more. I need more. That's not what we were built on. We weren't built on people looking for a handout. We were pe- we were built on people that came over here and they were willing to get their hands dirty. They were willing to do what a lot of people came here with like 10 cents in their hand. And they were like, I will do what it takes to make it work. And legal. they came here through legal channels. Exactly. Right. They didn't, they didn't hop a border and pay off some, you know, trafficker Coyote. to get yeah. here. God. Exactly. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. So there is a difference and they need to understand the difference and the people that can't are just dense. Yeah. They're morons, complete morons. Seth McMillan. Thank you so much. Seth says he's a stand up philosopher, AKA bullshit artist. I'm assuming he's talking about Mayorkas, but I, I can't be sure that was at eight 30. Yeah. It was probably Mayorkas. Uh, Lori Weens. Thank you. Lori says update on my friend Trina's cancer. They learned that she is a candidate for gene therapy taken by pill that specifically targets only the defective and cancer cells. Oh my gosh. That is really amazing. 
Very she cool. says her cancer is still there and long-term incurable, save for God taking it away, but it can change life expectancy from seven to 11 months to potentially three to seven years. That's Please amazing. continue to pray. Absolutely. Positively, we will. So, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> and Marcus Drake, thank you. Marcus says yeast genetics equals finding a way to brew a better beer. <laughs> I, okay, I'll take I it. I don't think that's what he was doing, I, but <laughs> oh my gosh, we need to ask. But who him. knows? I could be wrong. <laughs> Even if he gave me an explanation, I still wouldn't understand it. Oh my god, I would have no clue. Mm -hmm. I, I would have, and neither my sister nor I inherited the science math genes at all. It skips a generation. Oh, does it ever? Does <laughs> it ever? Oh my god, did not get that at all. Uh, so huge, huge protests happening at college campuses all across the country. As you know, Columbia, the, you know, the president of Columbia and some of the board of trustees were testifying just the other day, trying to insist, no, 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 we've got this under control. They don't, they don't have it under control at all. Um, and actually there was, uh, Ilhan, Ilhan Omar's daughter who doesn't attend Columbia, but she does attend Barnard college. I think is how you say it. Um, is she also, is that, is that I'm York not sure. Guys? I'm not sure yeah. where it is. Um, but she got suspended for her part, her participation in these anti-Israel protests. And so look at her punchable face. She looks just uh, like her mom. When this happens. Right? She, Doesn't she? Looks, she? She it looks exactly like her mother, which is she's also punchable. Yeah. She also looks like her uncle. Not, not that we condone that. And uh, right, her, and exactly. father. <laughs> Exactly. Her uncle slash father. <laughs> that's it. That's uh, Ilhan's brother. Because she's her, her brother. It's her funkle. Yeah. Her funkle. Yeah, exactly. So she was arrested and that made me happy. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, she was on Twitter bitching about it and saying, woe is me. Course. And I was like, I, I'm sure I speak for a lot of people when I say you deserve this and you suck. And so does your mom. Yeah. Um, Anti-Semitic so hack. I was super mature about it. Yeah. <laughs> How did you know that? I would expect <laughs> nothing less. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but there was some serious uh, chaos at Columbia. And in fact, it overwhelmed the New York Police Department. They were outnumbered by pro-Hamas activists near Columbia University who were blocking the streets and stopping the police from arresting the activists. Um, and this is... <sighs> This is what happened when you let this stuff happen with mm -hmm. no consequence, you're going to get more of the stuff. Right. This is what happens with anything. Yeah. Um, it's, it's like, listen, going back to the border, same thing. It's like the only that we talk about, like deportation and stuff like that. I feel like there there won't be a deep a mass deportation if Trump gets elected, because the only the way to get them out of here, because, you know, like people will say, I don't, oh, there's going to be a mass deportation. I don't think that that's going to happen. I think the only way to get these people out of here is to cut them off of stuff. Right. And it's, and this, and it's kind of the same notion with this. You have to, again, teaching people how to treat you. It's like you have to nip the behavior in the bud, you know? Exactly. And exactly. this is, it's the same deal. And we're not doing that. We're no. Doing and it's, it's, like it's, it's, it's just like the retail theft, too. I mean, it's, uh -huh. it's, it's like this with literally anything. If you allow it, if there are no consequences, you are right. you're basically subsidizing it. It's That's like what's parenting. happening. This is like parenting 101. We're dealing mm -hmm. with toddlers. And they're hard. awful. There's there was one video I saw circulating around where there was one of these protesters literally saying and holding up a sign saying we are Hamas. So no more. Can you try to make a difference between Palestinians? and There is no difference. I'm tired of people trying no. to pretend there is one. Yes. Stop these it. are all terrorists. I'm sorry, but they are. That yeah. That is how I feel. Totally. Um, and, and they're and, here and they're yeah. here. They're and on they're our here, college. And, and Israel is the first target. America is the larger right. target. Exactly. So, and if you think other, so if you think awful. otherwise, you're so, if you think otherwise, you're just ignorant, you're ignorant at this point. And the fact that the cops are outnumbered by these people, if that doesn't concern you, I can't help you. <laughs> and like, listen to how they treat the cops. I mean, the, these people are vile. Absolutely. NYPD, vile. KKK, I know what they're all the same. Nice. NYPD, KKK, I know what they're all the same. Nice. I think I just I can't uncover <laughs> your faces, you freaking cowards. Right? I swear. Oh my God.
they're just awful. And now this is uh, this is not one of those protesters, although I would not be surprised if she were a participant. Um, but this just gives you an idea of the mentality. This is this is how they think. These are all crazy commie lunatics. She specifically is talking about private property. We should abolish private property. I'm really? so proud. Yes. You don't think anyone <laughs> should be able to own property? I guess. Um, I think that as things exist, squatting should be allowed because people own property. Property shouldn't just sit empty, and if they are, they should be seized by people who need them. Seized. We should work towards a world where uh, people can have housing that's not based on how much money you have or how much access to capital or resources. It should just be a basic resource. And so if squatting is a means to like obtain that to necessary like. right, that like intrinsic dignified right, which is not a human right, but access to housing is. And squatting as something that's illegal, I think the legality of it should be usurped for the necessity of access to material resources like housing. What bodily thing is she holding in that jar? Seriously, what, what was it? Was that cat brains? Like what is in there? What's in, I wanna know what's in that ball jar. It's really concerning. Oh my God. These What's this? people she's what, are nut jobs. She's like, what, 19 years old? And she's like, oh, I know. Seize the property. Just see somebody else's property that they own. And that's okay. This is what yeah. she thinks. This is what she's been taught by what? Society and by No, it's by college. By her Exactly. College. Educational institutions. This is, we're, man, <laughs> doomed, man. We're just doomed. Right? These it, kids. it does feel like we're pretty doomed yeah. and it's not just the anti-Israel crazies. It's the climate crazies too. So yesterday that group, that impossibly obnoxious group that does all the traffic blocking and like they cement their hands to roads and all kinds of shit. So they shut down a gala that was supposed to honor Senator Lisa Murkowski calling her a murderer. She, they said she incinerates us to enrich her cronies. So as she was receiving an award from Chevron, they stepped in and stopped the ceremony and then they have the gall to say respect us or expect us did you and this is what the uh video of this okay chaos good, video. looked like because it was it was crazy insane you even I mean, what in the world? These are the climate whack jobs. Mm -hmm. My this God. is, and this is the agenda that the left is pushing right now and that they will continue to push. This is like, mm -hmm. this is their new thing. This is their new COVID, right? Like this is it. And that Lord. those are the people who are behind it. That's who they align themselves with. Just remember that. Cause it's, yeah. they won't, they won't stop on the climate thing. Those people are crazy. They're crazy. The anti-Israel people are crazy. And there is not a single one among them that is conservative, not a one. And I mm -hmm. hope that that those visuals and the c continued craziness, because, you know, it's going to ramp up over the summer. Totally. I hope it does only for the reason that they are tied to Democrats. They are oh, tied what? to Joe Biden. Without question. Without qu Joe Biden loves it. Do Joe Biden talks about climate all the time. I mean, they absolutely, this is, they are, the Democrats own that. They own the mm -hmm. crazy. They are the anti-Israel climate party. They own yep. it. Yep. Uh, Burgess Owens was talking about these students. Um, I think this was yesterday. Also, I I'm not sure who he is speaking to in this clip, but I liked the clip and thought you guys would too. My major concern is thousands of Columbia students coming from countries that hate America and the other democracy in that region, Israel. How does this work? International students paying a total of 90000 a year up front, skip classes to demonstrate, bully Americans, burn American flags, stop traffic in our countries as they shout death to America. In some kind of way, they still get a degree. I think most of us, unless they're genius, most of us spend 100% of our time trying to, to pass our courses, particularly $90,000 per year. Uh, I'm running out of time. I'll just say this. I'd like to know how many of these folks are actually graduating and what degrees are and how they're getting paid to come to our campus and, and, and bully our kids the way they are right now. And I, with that, I'd like to yield back. It's a great question. Mm -hmm. 90, great 90 question. grand. Yeah, 90 grand a year to go to the, some of these schools. Who's bankrolling them? What kind of degrees are they getting? And then where are they working afterwards? 
I think these are jobs, unfortunately. These protests are paid gigs. Like forever and ever? Probably. Yeah, because you want, because it's like most of these kids are in like liberal arts programs. I mean, it's not and like they learn gonna... to organize. That's yeah, what they, it, that's their major. I mean, these aren't doctors and engineers that no, these aren't. That's not what they are. But 90 no. grand a year. Can you even? Oh, wow. It's just disgusting. Mm-hmm. Curio 23. Thank you. Curio says Trump's next press secretary needs to speak in every language the federal government recognizes. One day, English, then French, Tagalog, Japanese, et cetera. Yeah. Can you imagine how long the pressers would be if they had to go and make sure Ridiculous. that they were communicating to every single language? <laughs> It's just, it's, oh my it's gosh. stupid. Tic Tac, thank you very much. Tic Tac says, Mock and Daisy just recently found your content and thank you for being so darn amazing. God bless and have an amazing or an awesome weekend. Thank you, Tic Tac. Well, that's so and sweet. welcome. Thank you. Welcome, welcome. Uh, Dushelius, Dushelius, thank you. So, uh, he says, come, I have no idea if I'm saying it's that right. Douche Elias. Douche Elias uh-huh. says, come to Jesus, ladies. It's the NGO that are pushing this for more government contracts. Uh, and there, yeah, I'm sure that there are a lot of uh, NGOs that are absolutely doing that. We saw that happening. Mm-hmm. What was the, um, there was a reporter from, where was it? wasn't Guatemala. It was like, I don't know. It was some, it was some Central American country where there was some r- reports showing the signage from those NGOs, yeah. like helping the illegals get through to the God. next checkpoint. And then you're owned. Can you imagine being one of those people? And then you're just owned. I don't want to yeah. be owned by anybody. You're yeah. essentially basically, you're basically like, I, I dare I say you're a slave at that point because it, that you are owned by somebody. That's so gross. Don't you guys think that's gross? Because you're seriously, you're being paid to do that. And then essentially you're doing that the rest of your life then because you sign Mm -hmm. up. It's like you sign your life away to do that because you're they're paying you, what, 90 grand a year to go to this college. And then you get out and you're like a community organizer or whatever. You're you're indebted to that entity forever. Like, I don't know, for however long they want you to do that stuff. What if you change your mind? I mean, it, granted, you probably brainwashed at that point. But what if yeah, you Yeah, then what can you do? What skills Nothing. do you have? <laughs> you have no skills. Exactly. Like you are, that's just gross. I mean, it's, yeah. what a gross existence. Teresa Raimundo, thank you. Teresa says she should be press secretary. She strings some 50 cent words together to come to a 10 cent finish. She's talking about that girl saying that she's against property rights. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she was pretty good at stringing together. The, yeah, she was very Kamala about how she put together the words absolutely nonsensical mm-hmm. statements. Yeah, the word salad was good. That's I think they learned that in their courses at school. They learned mm. how to put like neat little words together. Good for her. Yeah. Bravo. Well, and speaking of uh, press secretaries, KJP was asked about the cannibal story. Um, and this is audio only because I think that they were on Air Force One uh, for this press pool. But I and I can't make it out. Maybe you'll be able to. But at the very beginning, somebody asks her something about and, and says the word cannibal and she breaks into laughter and I, and says something in return about it. I don't understand that part of the conversation, but the the point of playing this is that now the white house and she being the spokesperson for him is basically redirecting that story so they're talking about the airplane crash it was not shot down as joe biden likes to say mm-hmm. how the the crash happened in the water um you know it wasn't under conflict it there's something that happened to the plane and it crashed and so she just dis- she basically just dismisses after they joke about it. She dismisses the cannibal story altogether and then tries to talk about what an emotional experience it was for Biden to, like, go look for his uncle's name on the memorial. Blah, blah, blah. You'll hear it. Watch the cannibal tab in your book. <laughs> <laughs> There's no cannibal tab. What are you talking about? Um, is that what you look- is that what you're asking me about? Can you fit us in? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Look, I'll just, and I think we shared this with some of you, so I'm just going to kind of repeat. Look, the, you saw the president. He was incredibly proud of his uncle's service in uniform. You saw him at the war memorial. It was incredibly emotional and important to him. You saw him respond to all of you when asked about the moment uh, <laughs> yesterday. Uh, and his uncle, who lost his life when the military Ooh. aircraft he was on crashed in the Pacific after taking off near New Guinea. Uh, the president highlighted his uncle's story as he made the case for honoring our sacred commitment to 
to equip those we send to war and to take care of them and their families when they come home. And as he reiterated that the last thing American veterans are are suckers or losers, and he wanted to make that clear. He wanted to make the story. I mean, look, I, I I don't have anything beyond about what I just laid out, but it, I I don't have any. Uh, intelligence to share with you she has nothing intelligent to share with anybody she doesn't i'm surprised she didn't start dancing it's a different world because <laughs> you know they're a bunch of professionals in this white house oh my god mm -hmm. so yeah you'll notice that in that long obviously read from notes answer she did not mention the cannibal part of the story, even though Biden yeah. talked about that three different times. Yeah. And speaking of Biden, man, you guys, he was incoherent so many times in the last couple of days. Here he is talking about the planet or <laughs> climate change or I don't know. I see a future of the planet. We save the planet as this guy's busting his neck doing from the climate change. No, sir, no. Literally. Climate Literally. crisis in, in America. There's the Kennedys. The Kennedys were behind him. That dude mm -hmm. is creepy looking. I know it's one of Kennedy's brothers. And I'm sorry, yeah. but that he's creepy AF. <laughs> you guys can judge me all you want. But he is. He's a little weird looking. And I'm creepy. so, and I'm, I don't know if we're getting to that because we were so we are. poor. Okay. But those, all of them behind him is so irritating. All of those, all those kids are like, oh yeah, we're just totally, I mean, I have so many things to say about the Kennedy <laughs> kids being behind Joe Biden. So gross. It is pretty so, vile. So, gross. but, and we will get to the video of Carrie Kennedy, but, uh, but first Joe Biden is also Pittsburgh. Oh, he's I don't Pittsburgh know what too? that means. He is Pittsburgh. He was probably raised there too, as a young black boy. <laughs> he is Pittsburgh. He okay. Is. In America. <laughs> I'm Pittsburgh, uh, and uh, because of, and I, I really mean it. He really means well, it. Well, <laughs> well, he is technically a stealer. You see what I did there? <laughs> see what I did there? <laughs> see what I did? <laughs> you see what I did there? He's a stealer. <laughs> uh, he also, a couple days ago, wanted to talk about how he had warned Israel not to invade Haifa. Don't do it, Israel. Don't. Just. Don't. doesn't matter that Haifa is the third largest city in Israel. Don't <laughs> invade it. Okay, just don't. don't. Don't invade Haifa. And I made it clear to Israelis, don't move on Haifa. It's just oh, not, God. I mean, it, anyway, I, I just, <sighs> look I what we did recently oh. when oh. Israel was attacked. Oh, I can't. Where am I? Oh my God! I need ice cream. God. Oh, oh, it's a lot of that. It's like oh, it's like he's trying to hold a puppy and he can't. And he's like oh, it's. I got to work on my Biden oh impression. My God. <laughs> Such an It's idiot. frankly not as good as your Bernie. I have yeah. to say. What it's do you not. got? Up? <laughs> it's not the same. It's not. <laughs> He's so earnest. <laughs> also, uh, you need to choose between democracy and freedom. You got to. I guess. You according got to the president, here he is again. Are you ready to choose freedom over democracy? Because that's America. Yes. <laughs> that's America. Since when is that America? First of all, no. We're a constitutional republic. You a-hole. It's not... <laughs> That's not, you don't get to choose, you're supposed to choose between, who is this guy? Where does he get his information? He has been in government for half a century and he doesn't know that we're a constitutional republic. Well, and that he's saying that we have to choose one or the other. Freedom or choose. democracy, you just you guys can't choose. have both of those things. And don't jump. <laughs> don't do it. Yes, as somebody asked, is Haifa a city in Israel? Yes, it is. He mm -hmm. meant Rafa. Uh, but he's too dumb to know that that's what he meant. So mm -hmm. he said Haifa. No. Um, okay, so to the Kennedys. So the Kennedy siblings all came out in support of Joe Biden, unbelievably. Gross. And Gross. and what was super interesting to me is when Carrie Kennedy spoke because she suffers the exact same I voice know. condition 
as her brother. Isn't that crazy? It is crazy. So it's dysonia, what? I think it's called. Um, but it was so crazy. I didn't know that. I and didn't I, either. So obviously, it's a very genetic thing, right? Because mm -hmm. um, she sounds like she has a milder case of the exact same thing that um, RFK Jr. has with his voice. Here she is, like, saying mean things about Trump and supporting Biden. I can only imagine how Donald Trump's outrageous lies and behavior would have horrified my father, Senator Robert F. Kennedy, who proudly served as the Attorney General of the United States and honored his pledge to uphold the law and protect the country. Daddy stood for equal justice, for human rights, and freedom from want and fear, just as President Biden does today. No, not true. So gross. Why don't you think they get like one of the other girls to do that? Uh, well, maybe they all have it. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I, I one, really don't know. Who is the? What's the dude's name? What's the dude's name? Sorry, he's just creepy. Who's what's the, the brother? Dude? Yeah, I don't. I, don't, know I forget. Do you guys know his know. name? I don't know his name. Anyways, I listen. Maybe it's because it just reminds me of my family and how they would all do the same thing to me. But <laughs> but. <laughs> I just can't stand any of these people. <laughs> you know they would. You know my family would do this to me. You know they would. <laughs> You've been friends with me long enough to know that if I ran for president, they'd all be like, we totally support the other <laughs> the person. Other <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> that bitch is crazy. Yeah, they would. They all they all would do it. Oh, my God. <laughs> my family's so dysfunctional. So I kind of, so I get really, I get mad about, the fact that his family is just betrayed him in such a way because they're praying at the altar of like Joe Biden. <laughs> gross. I right. Mean, it's just gross. I just, it's I pretty vile. I, I, yeah, I find it to be so disgusting that they would do that to their brother. First of all, I just, I mean, politics aside, that's gross. You guys, that's just gross. And, and, and think of the things that the government has done to their family. Yeah, I mean, look what they, look. I mean, let's just get real. Just let's just have a conversation at the, at the <laughs> kitchen table right now, like you guys and me. And let's talk about just for a second about what the government has done to, you know, their their father and their uncle. And don't you think they would be kind of like, you know, the government's not been so great to our family. I don't know. I this man, what a bunch of power hungry jerks yeah these, these well just, and, um, and just, just to put a cap on like how absurd it is who they're throwing their support behind dana bash sees this differently than i do but the biden campaign put out a new ad for the biden campaign and um it is called sharp and the whole ad is just like interviewing some dude saying like how much smarter joe biden was in person and the fact that they had to do that is a problem, right? Like the fact yeah. that they, this is what they're addressing is his sharpness level. Cause they know all the evidence is to the contrary. Totally. And so Dana's like, see, see, like, there's like I, I just couldn't believe yeah. her reaction. To it. You'll see it as soon as you see the ad. Before we go, I just want you and our viewers to see a brand new ad from the Biden campaign. And the name of the ad is sharp. I love to tell the story about meeting President Biden because when you meet him, this guy's as sharp as a knife. They have nothing else to attack because they can't attack the things that he's doing that are so good for this country. Oh my God, Joe Biden that's all we gets do. things done. That's, <laughs> that's just who he is. That's all we do. I mean, that says it all again. That is from the <laughs> Biden campaign. Oh my gosh. Every that day. That says we, it all. That says it all, you guys. It says it all. We talk every day about policy. We live it. We oh live it. God. Dana Bash. <laughs> I just, yeah, I'm just appalled at like the, the fact that his family, just, I mean, I guess when you live in what, Kenny Bunkport or where Hyannisport, wherever it is these people live and they're gigantic mansions, they don't have to deal with the everyday things that we deal with. And so they just, they're power hungry jackwads that don't have to deal with this and so I, it's just it's astounding to me it's astounding yeah. to me that they don't and it's weird that rfk jr listen i'm not an rfk jr fan when it comes to you know like his 
his policies because he's a Democrat. He's a freaking liberal. I, I liked him on the vaccine stuff. But when it comes to this, it's just kind of gross that his whole family has like shunned him. And, you know, they want to throw him under the bus for these crappy policies that I don't get it. It's 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 very telling, isn't it? It's mm, very telling. Very it's telling. Weird. Yeah. But I mean, listen, we've been we've been dissing Biden's policies for ever. This yeah. Is, I mean, to hear that guy go, they don't have anything else to say. What? Are you serious? Like, God, have have you been, all the things to say. You've been paying attention. <laughs> like, that's the whole point of this. That's the whole right. point. That's why everybody, that's why a lot of people who are on the fence who may not even like Trump are probably going to vote for Trump is because of that. That's why he's pulling in, even he's pulling in black voters and Hispanic voters. He's it's, it's different this time around because people are feeling it in places that they have never felt it before because of Biden's crappy policies, because mm -hmm. of Democrat crappy policies. Look at what's going on in the world. Everything's on fire because of Democrat policies hilarious and sad. he's also demented so like we have we have a horrible Everything. record yeah. and his dementia <laughs> so uh -huh. it's not like the sharpness thing is not the only thing that mm -hmm. republicans can talk about at all uh andrea viola thank you she says american citizens are slaves our money is providing for illegals pensions in ukraine funding aid in the middle east while right. our lives are destroyed god it's so true 100 percent right oh, it is so true it's okay the, our founders are just rolling in their graves you guys um, we still have so much to get to. It's okay. It's Friday. Okay. Let's just right, party. Good. It's, it's, it's fun. And there's we'll fun stuff it. towards the end. So yeah. I feel like it's all worth it. Guys, just get another cup of coffee. That's right. Settle in, get boned. Mm -hmm. We're in here right. for the long haul. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know from when this clip is, I think it may have been during the George Floyd hullabaloo, but Marianne Williamson. <laughs> oh my God. This clip. Did we ever dodge all the bullets with her? <laughs> this uh, chick. <laughs> Oh my woo -woo. God. She's woo woo. <laughs> she is woo woo. So she's in a church. Um, and it's, I don't know why the, the picture is so small, but just to get, for those of you who can't like zoom in on what you're seeing, it's a very full church. And there are these mini miniature groups that have been made inside the church whereby a black person has been surrounded in a small circle by white people. Okay. So there's a bunch of these little groups, black person in the middle, white person surrounding them. Marianne Williamson has asked the congregation to form itself in this manner so that they can then repeat after her to the black people the following. And now as I, as I speak, I'm going to ask the white Americans in the room to please repeat after me. On behalf of myself and on behalf of my country. To you and all African Americans. Oh my God. From the beginning of our nation's history. In honor of your ancestors and on behalf of your children. Please hear this from my heart. I apologize. It gets apologize. better. It gets better. Please, forgive us. Please forgive us. With this prayer, I acknowledge, prayer, I acknowledge the depth of the evils that have been perpetrated against black people in America. Okay. From slavery to lynchings, to white supremacist laws, to the denial of voting rights, to all the ways, both large and small, all of them evil, all of them wrong, for all the oppression and all of the injustices. I apologize. Please forgive us. Okay, so that's the first part. This went on for quite a while, okay? But then it gets so much better. Like the, then, the, there's this, it just, I could not believe, I was like, this is a skit, right? <laughs> I, when I saw it, it was just, I couldn't believe that it was actually real. But then 
one of those black women, I guess, I, it's hard to know, um, you will all of a sudden hear a complete meltdown. And what you'll see is Marianne Williamson moving out of the frame. So we don't know what she's doing with this person. We can only assume that what's happening is that either there's an exorcist happening on the side, <laughs> exorcism <laughs> happening on the side My that we don't God. know about, or that like one of these people have, has been so overcome with emotion that they just freak out. And so this is, this is how that goes. It is for you and for your grandparents and their grandparents before them and their grandparents before them. In the world, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to laugh. It's uh, <laughs> this is some cult stuff happening cult. right here. This cult. is a cult, you guys. <laughs> she was a <laughs> somebody just said that's whiteness leaving the body. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's like it's, that is like that is oh some my god pure cult like stuff happening. <laughs> it's I don't even know what kind of a church that is, but this is why people. Oh my god! This is why people aren't going to church anymore. This is one of the reasons. It's like <laughs> somebody just said that mother effer isn't real. <laughs> I just, oh my God. And you know, Jesus is like, this is not how <laughs> this is, not is what supposed I meant. to, this is not what I meant. You guys is not, <laughs> not what I meant. Oh, wow. That was something. Uh, Andrew yeah. Viola says M Williamson is Chardonnay Antifa. Oh my it's a cult. God. Like whatever that great. was. Yeah. That was a cult. <laughs> mm -hmm. She's like, my let me get back on my astral projection. <laughs> Michael Steller, thank you. Michael says, it's crazy how Democrats can't defend why they're voting for Biden. They can only complain that they don't like Trump. There's no substance. That's exactly mm -hmm. right. Right. Connie Cannell, thank you so much. Connie says, never. They can have my white privilege card. Happy Friday, chicks. Yeah, can you imagine mm -hmm. the idiots in that room actually repeating after her? I cannot. The and oh there were God. a lot of people in there. There were, yeah, there were a lot of people. Of people and those people vote. It's, it's terrifying. Ridiculous. Um, also, uh, we meant to get to the story yesterday and we just ran out of time. But um, Kate, Caitlin Clark, it, it, she is just signed with the fever. This is the, a professional basketball player now. She just was at where? What school was she? Was it UConn? No, I don't. I don't. It know. was the other one. Um, is it? Well, it was whoever UConn. She, she was at LSU. Was it Iowa? I don't know. I, don't, I can't remember where she was. I don't. I don't um, know. It doesn't matter. I have no idea. <laughs> Doesn't no, matter because it's women's Somebody, basketball. Pe whatever. People will tell us. <laughs> Iowa? Iowa. Yeah, I think it was Iowa. It was Iowa. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, so she was at a presser because she signed with the fever and, you know, that was a big deal. And there was a reporter from the Indie Star there who apparently is like a gross. Like people don't like him. And he made this like super cringe comment at her. So for those of you who don't know, at every game, she does a heart symbol to her family, right? Like that. Which I don't know if she sweet. does it after. Very sweet. I don't know if it's very, after very or before sweet. the game because yeah. I don't pay attention to women's basketball. No, I mean, I, um, this and is most why, people don't. <laughs> yeah, this is why they don't make a lot of money because not a lot of people pay attention to them. So anyway, she does the heart. And so apparently this reporter from the Indy Star um, did it at her. And then that's where this conversation picks up. And so you'll hear the cringe moment and then we will discuss. No. <laughs> as soon as this is over. <laughs> make it stop. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Caitlin, uh, Greg Doyle, Indy Star. Real quick, I'll let me do this. You like you like that? I like that you're here. I like yeah, that you're here. I, I do that at my family after every game, so. Okay, well, let's cool. start doing it to me and we'll be able to get along just fine. So, question. Start doing it to me and we'll get along just fine. I mean, I, listen, I... There's a lot of hullabaloo about this, and I, I know. don't get it. I know. People are freaking out about this, and I think he's just weird. He's a nerdy, like, he's socially inept, and I don't think he was trying to, like, uh, 
I, I just don't see what the big, I don't, I know everybody is like trying to cancel this guy mm -hmm. like 16 ways to Sunday and it was kind of cringy, but can we just not, there are other things to do. <laughs> and I just don't see seriously. He, I know people are like, Oh my God, he's a total perv and we should cancel him. And he's like, okay. I mean, I, that's, you can think that, but I think he's just kind of, he's just kind of nerdy. Honestly, I think he's awkward and cringe. And yeah. he actually said after the fact, he was just like, man, I, that was not what I meant to say. And that yeah. sounded really bad. And I just really made a mess of that. And I'm sorry. So mm -hmm. he felt bad about it. But then like the people that were freaking out about this, who probably all rock out to freaking Cardi B and don't have exactly. any problem with her lyrics. I know. Like, the, and the people that were freaking out about it included Dave Portnoy, who oh I adore, God. but who's also a complete dog. Okay. And so for him to like, be like, for him to be like clutching pearls about this, about this not so pervy comment. I mean, I know. it was cringy, but was it yeah. really this outrageous? Oh yeah. my God. Like, go, go find another porn star to sleep with or something. You know, <laughs> I mean, like, it just was like, so dumb. I know it's just, it's ridiculous. Like people are getting so bent out of shape about this. And I think it's just, we are in such an outrage culture where every little thing is picked apart. And I, yeah. I, I, it's not that I'm not, I don't feel bad for the guy. I just, I, I, I don't feel bad because of what he said. I feel bad because of the absolute crazy backlash that people face when you say something stupid. Right. Because Which we I all mean, do from time to time. I say stupid crap all the time. And it's like, my God, if, if I can't imagine, like if I were on that sort of a stage and a, and a platform like that, and I said some of the things that I say on a regular <laughs> basis, we'd be canceled. You know what I mean? It's like, I just, I know that people are human. They do stupid stuff. He said something that was awkward and, and kind of dumb. I don't think he was, if he was trying to like be pervy with her, I don't think he would do it in a public forum like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, and it was I a just, creepy comment, but like, right. was it really that no, bad? I just, mean, he was just, he, it was like he was trying to flirt and just doing it really badly. He was. And so who cares? Yeah. And so then after he, like he puts out this apology tweet, Dave Portnoy retweets it and just captions it pervert. Like it um, still wasn't good enough. Are you, know you what I mean? serious? And I I'm mean, just like, Dave. What is your problem? Yeah. Since when did he become like the the arbiter? He's like the the high priest of what is of how men should behave. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I, <laughs> oh my god. Really? Really? Wow. This is the thing. yeah. I, I mean, yes, need... it was creepy. It was creepy and poorly worded. We can all agree on that. Sure. But like, this was sure. Not, this did not rise to the level of the outrage. It just no, didn't. No, it, it didn't. just didn't. and I we're just we're we're so over the top with the outrage and the canceling and just mm -hmm. you know. And I and, and he and he apologized. Yeah, he he apologized, and I don't even know if I would have done that. I would have, and I would, or maybe I would have done it in a way where I'd have been like, you know what. I'm, I sometimes say stupid stuff. Yeah. I'm sorry for saying something stupid, but I didn't mean it the way that it was meant to, you know, it's, why are we so dumb? <laughs> <laughs> Everything is so dumb. Everything is and, dumb now. And speaking yeah. of dumb, Joy Reid, <laughs> remember how we talked um, the other day about like the pay, the wage gap between the men's basketball and the women's basketball. Mm -hmm. So now Joy Reid is on this tear and sh now she's mad about the number of black Americans in Major League Baseball. Oh my God. So <laughs> she said the number of black American players in Major League Baseball has plummeted to just 6% offering a warning about what can happen when institutions de-emphasize diversity. And so I.O. Uh, on Twitter decided to retweet it and said the number of white male American sprinters competing in the Olympics has been zero for 56 years, offering a warning about what can happen if you just let people compete fairly on a level playing field. And then somebody pointed out that the MLB is actually 30 percent Latino and has the most Asian players of any major sport in America. But see, the problem is to Joy Reid. Asian doesn't count as diversity. No. Only black does. Or Latinos. And so the fact that major league, or, I'm sorry, but that like the NBA and football have 70% black players, having white diversity does not matter to Joy Reid. No, it doesn't. Diversity doesn't. doesn't mean diversity. It just means all the black people to Joy Yeah, Reed. she just wants all the black people. Yeah. God, mm -hmm. I can't stand her. Can yeah, I, I just, I her? don't, I just don't take her seriously at all. She's just, she's just a, a non-serious person to me. 
and yeah. and she's a racist. So I just I yeah. can't take racist seriously because she's just an awful racist human being. Gross. Indeed. Indeed. Uh, also, we meant to get to this yesterday, but that is the, there's a school in Utah where the students are being completely harassed by a bunch of furries. Which sounds so silly. Like this, the fact that this is a story is, is even so crazy, I right? Know. But it's a problem. So there's enough furries at this one school that are harassing the non furries, or should I say, the normal kids. Um, and we're talking, they're scratching, they're biting, they're throwing, like spraying them with things. Oh they're just absolutely out of control. So all these kids, with their parents' permission, walked out of the school and they, they held a walkout and they were like, we're not going to take this shit anymore. This is absolutely insane. And so this is hard to read, but this was just kind of like the report about it. All these kids were just like, we just want to learn. We don't want to have to deal with these psychopaths that don't think that they're people and that think that they're freaking cats or whatever. Yeah. I mean, they're just crazy. And they're, and they're not learning because they're walking out. They're not learning. So right. this there again, it goes back to the whole argument of it's like we talked about with, you know, transgenders and sports. We talked about, and everybody's like, you know, these kids, just these girls just need to walk out. They need to not compete. OK, well, then they're not getting what they're supposed to. They're not doing what they should be doing, which is competing and they lose. So again, there again, these kids are losing. You know why? Because the adults in the room were not adulting when they should have been freaking adulting to begin with. These stupid furries. <laughs> shouldn't have been furrying to begin with in the classrooms. That should have never been allowed. That's behavior no. that was never allowed when I was in school and it wasn't allowed when you guys were in school. And this is bullshit. I'm so sick of seeing this stuff. Adults are allowing too much of this stuff to happen when yeah. it shouldn't be happening in the first place. And then what they're doing is then they're putting on kids. Y'all just walk out. They're not learning because of this. And this is the adult's fault. It's all the adults. I'm so sick of this garbage. Oh, because again, garbage. no consequences. So right. what happens? You None. get more of it. And when you get more of it, they get be they get more violent or they get more crazy or they get more whatever it is I that would, they're doing more of. I would tell my daughter, you you know what? If somebody tries to bite you, you punch them in the face. You handle yeah, it physically. Yeah, but then they have these gigantic costumes so it wouldn't even hurt. I don't. Well, I would tell her, you rip that thing off and you punch him directly <laughs> in the face. And I don't have a problem with that. And in this case, I would be okay with violence. If some if some weirdo furry tried to physically harm you in any way, you have carte blanche. You wail on them. And she's an athlete. <laughs> she, I would be like, go for it. Seriously. Yeah. Well, let's and hear if you, from if you, one of the furries. And if you end up expelled, we'll take you to a different school, you know, and I'll sue. I'll sue because that is, it's ridiculous. This is insanity. I cannot believe that parents and administrators and people that are involved with the school, adults in the room are not adulting. So tired of this crap. It shouldn't be up to the kids. It shouldn't. Kids are losing because of adults not being able to adult and parent. Insanity. All right. So here is what one of the furries says. They are saying that this is just being blown out of proportion. You Ugh. guys, it's just we're just making too much of it. It's oh fine. God. Everything's fine. <laughs> Thank you. This is Strudel, a member of the furry fandom. What? Though they've been a furry for over a decade, oh my God. they have their own opinions. It's crazy that it's escalated to this point where these kids are being so distracting to their peers that their peers want to stage a walkout. So to have you know the next generation kind of muddy our name and. Um, Muddy your not name? Not it very well. It is kind of disappointing. Your name is Strudel. Strudel believes there should be some limits. Continue doing things you like. Continue dressing up. Um, continue making art. But maybe let's keep oh it God. outside of school hours. As for the school, maybe. Sorensen yeah, maybe. says they have one main goal. We want every student to feel safe when they come to school. And we want students to get along. In fact, we want adults to get along. Okay, so the district says they've worked with some students whose dress and appearance they say might be disruptive to the school environment. You, oh, you think? think? You think that's disruptive? <laughs> my God. Is this, <gasps> this is not brain surgery. Be a freak on your own time. Oh, my God. I just, I just cannot. And it's, you know, it kills me. It's like these wear a costume to school. My daughter has a, a dress code. She can't wear like certain leggings to school, but then these kids can wear costumes. What, right? in, what in the hell is going on in our schools? Seriously. Like she can't wear shirts that have like a certain strap. As a, as a, she has to wear like certain kind of shirts because she can't show her shoulders <laughs> in school. But then these people can wear furry costumes. What? 
I, I can't. I'm at a loss. I just. Well, it gets worse, unfortunately. There is a, um, a an elementary school in Georgia where a fourth grade fourth grade level in this uh, classroom was shown a video to try to essentially groom these kids into being tolerant and accepting of people who think that they're a different gender. Okay. So the way that they do it, because these are youngsters, these are fourth graders. So they try to use an example of cats and dogs. So like dogs feeling like cats and their message is this is okay. And you should let them believe that they're cats and that you should accept them as cats, which is freaking psychotic. Yeah. This is the message to elementary school students. Check this out. Oh my God. Hi, I'm Gulliver and this is Emmett. Hey. <laughs> oh, hi. I I'm Barry. <laughs> we are so excited you are here. We could choose another dog. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> nice collar. Mm. Oh, thank you. I mm. like that. So, what do you want to do first? Uh, find a two-toy? Oh, oh, chase our tail? Oh, I know. Let's sniff. Uh, no, actually, I like to play with yarn. Yeah. It's what? fun. Yeah. 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 Or, I, I like to <laughs> clean my paws like this. Uh, and you clean your okay. face too. Oh, yeah. Or 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 we could practice purring like this. Purring? Oh. Um. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we could try to meow. 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 Like that. Um. It's great fun. You should try it. Uh. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Uh, excuse me. Would you? Yeah. I uh. I just uh. I have to go for a second. I'll be right back. No problem. Miss Madison? Miss Madison? Oh, hey, Gulliver. You're back. Did you find Barry? Yeah. We've got to talk. He seems like a nice guy. Oh, great guy. Great guy. He thinks he's a cat. He thinks he's a cat? Yeah. He's over there talking about yarn, purring, woof, and licking. Well, that's okay, isn't it? Well, I think you should talk to him. About what? Well, about being more like a dog. Gulliver, you're really struggling with this. Oh, my God. It's weird. It's not weird, just different. Hmm? I couldn't ask Barry to change who he is. Oh, my God. That would God. make him really sad. Oh, but, but... Oh, Gulliver, no. accepting people for who they are is a very important skill. Mm. It's we a skill. We accept people who you are. Yes. That's different. I'm a dog who acts like a dog. That's a skill. That's normal. Not normal, just more common. That you know is insane. Yeah, it's complete. Oh it's my God. Complete insanity. Yeah, that it, that's a skill. No, actually, math is a skill. Teach it. Teach that yeah. to my kid. So tired of this garbage. It's unreal. And this is the thing is that what happens when they get out of school and they get into the workplace? they're going to want to do this in the workplace because they've been taught this is okay. This is a skill. Everybody accepts it. It's wonderful. And so if you own a business and these, you know, weirdos get into, they want to like get into your business and they want to like, they want to dress like this during, this is what's going to happen. This is the next generation. They want to do this. They want to be who they are wherever they go. And they're mm -hmm. going to, they're going to expect that they can do that in the workplace too. I mean, you were in HR. Could you imagine? Yeah like hiring somebody and then all of a sudden you hire them and then you realize that person dresses like a donkey. <laughs> but it's, it's not abnormal. It's, it's no. just different. You got to accept common. You got to accept who they are. Yeah. And then they're going to be like, hee haw during a, a budget meeting. You have to <laughs> accept that. You got to accept the hee hawing during, <laughs> during your budget. It's not funny, Mark. I don't know why you're <laughs> laughing. There's going to be hee-hawing during the budget Because it's meeting. all I can do. I mean, what is going on? <laughs> That's These, all I can do. I just don't And then there are know. parents who send their kids off to school in that crap, and they think it's okay. I blame the parents. Yeah. Good Lord. Uh, Leslie Quilt says, y'all, my day isn't complete until Mock and Daisy sing Visiting Angels. <laughs> Visiting Angels. Angels. America's choice in home can care. Look at that harmony. We tried to speed it up a little bit this we time. Did. <laughs> we totally did. Lori Weens yeah. just sent like a billion pictures of sheep. I, I think that was in response to the Marianne Williamson clip. Yeah. 
Yeah. So many <laughs> Tom sheep. J. Tom J said, I'm behind, but that New York City Councilwoman Palladino is my district rep and it's beautiful here. No migrants, no crime, only one of a few GOP reps. Interesting. Okay. Well, that's good. That's good. That's good to know. Yeah. Anastasia 63. Thank you. She says Portnoy calling him out would be like Andrew Tate calling him out. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Take all the seats, Dave. Right. I'm sad because I like Dave usually. I do too. I do I'm too. I'm a huge Dave fan. But this yeah. was so ridiculous. But I mean, can ridiculous. we just talk? Just, just maybe everybody calm down. You know? Oh my God. Maybe he needs to loosen up a little bit. And Teresa Raimundo, thank you. Teresa says a furry for over a decade. <sighs> what? I know. It's crazy. It's totally crazy completely crazy. I hope I haven't mm -hmm. missed any. It has no place in our schools. None. Yeah, okay. Also, to your point that you made earlier about the adults being the ones to take control of the situation and not the kids, I regret to inform you that kids are finding themselves in a position where they are taking control. And this is from Riley Gaines. So this was at a shot put event in West Virginia where five of the middle school female athletes refused to throw shot put against the male Becky Pepper Jackson. And that's because the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals blocked the West Virginia law that says you have to compete in the category that matches your sex. The court, the appeals court said, no, you don't have to. This is fine. You can still compete if you're a dude. And so these girls, what they did is they would each one by one, they would step into the shot put ring and then step out without actually throwing. And so they took the initiative and it wasn't all the girls on the team, but it was five of them. And so Riley was like, you know, shout out to these girls. It's sad that they have to be the adults in the room. Yeah, they, ha they but do. But she was very inspired and proud of those girls. Yeah. It just sucks because there are certain sports that you can do that in. And then there are other sports. I don't think people understand the the ins and outs, like the little intricate, the, the ins and outs of different sports. Like, um, you know, I think track is one of those sports. Swimming is one of those sports where like every meet counts, every... Yeah every minute counts. And like, you look at it, you're not competing always against other people. A lot of times you're competing against yourself and that's the essence of like a swimming or like track, track and field. And so when you bow out and you don't compete, you lose, you're right. losing essentially. And so that's when I hear people say, well, the girls just need to not compete. God, I get so angry about that. Cause it's like, okay, well, that's great for you to say, but these girls have been training for years to get to that one meet and that meet does count for her. So if she bows out, that boy still gets to compete and he will get a personal best time or whatever. And he won, meanwhile, he won this whole meet. Of course. He, right. He won. This is the uh, thing. And so these girls are doing what these, these adults are telling them to do, but they are still losing. Mm -hmm. And you know why? Because the adults in the first place didn't step up and be advocates for these girls. So shame on all the adults for making, for putting girls in this position. I mean, it's, it's the, it's on the adults. I cannot believe we're putting this on these girls. It just yeah. pisses me off. Um, And there's the weirdos. I'm starting to feel like, I don't, I don't know if it's just that they get all the attention and that's why it feels like there's more of them or there's just really more of them because it is such a social contagion. Yeah. But the level of insanity. And again, I play these montages not because I'm trying to give them more attention, but I'm trying to show people that this is an argument we have in favor of conservatives and in favor of Republicans. The more that we can push the fact that there's not a single one of these crazy people who are conservative, the better I think it is for the election. Um, and so that's why I draw attention to it, like this montage right I here. am genderqueer, trans mask, and queer. What's trans mask? Trans mask is like people under the non-binary umbrella at identifying <sighs> like or presenting mask. Masculine? Yeah. What about you? Um, I'm trans and uh, un my sexuality is unlabeled. Um, I use he, him pronouns. Yeah, and I use he, they pronouns. Fluid. Fluid? Fluid. Can you explain what that means to me a little bit more? Whatever turns you on. Pronouns. She, her, it. I feel like, honestly, honestly, it should not be a bad thing. Like, I've talked to people who go with they and them. I'm like, well, in the grammar of things, how would you want to represent yourself? I was like, I mean, I guess it, because it's like, you're you're it, you're the it. Like, it shouldn't be a bad name, it should just be owned. Gay, yes, yes, I love- She identify as he, she, her, oh. she. I guess you could call me gay, I'm 
homoflexible, really. I do like some women, but mostly men. I'm a male. I identify as a man. Um, as far as sexuality is concerned, I'm kind of open. Like, I mean, if you excite me, then you excite me, you know? I will forever support a child who wants to do whatever they want uh, with their whatever. And um, I will always be there for any children who want to pursue drag, things that they are LGBT in any sort of way. I will always support them. Yeah, I think that's amazing because when they're young and they're able to express themselves like that, they're going to grow older and be even more like amazing human beings and like destigmatizing that like fear and that hatred and that toxic masculinity and like I think it's amazing and I'm very happy and I'm proud of the younger generation. I bet you are. I bet you are really proud of them. Mm -hmm. So much mental illness. So, so much. much. Gosh. So much. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. I mean, it's yikes. just rampant. Uh, Curio23, thank you. He says trans women would switch back after their first period. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably totally that's probably true. accurate. Uh -huh. All right, it's time for good stuff, you guys. It's time for good stuff. So first, this is amazing. You know how like attention-seeking weirdos will often interrupt live news reports if someone is on location, for example, like this reporter clearly is in New Orleans, and there, there's people in the background who will be like, oh my God, it's a camera, and so they'll try to act like idiots yeah. behind them. <laughs> yes, yes. That was handled in the most masterful, beautiful way by this reporter. It is epic. You guys will love this one. People walking around with this glazed look in their eyes and just stumbling. Hey. Like this Welcome one behind me. Hi, yes. How are you doing? California. Oh, very nice to meet you. You know, we're going to do a story. You're going to do an interview with us? Sure. Okay, because we were just talking about here along Bourbon Street and uh -huh. the STD rate that's been going on here. And so how long have you, um, have you had an STD? I don't have an STD. Oh, then why did you want to talk? Oh, my goodness. Can oh, my gosh. I'm so sorry. Are you serious? I'm be ashamed of right now. No, I don't have an STD. That's oh, so okay. Okay. Oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so I <laughs> that is fantastic. I love that so much. Oh my god. <laughs> that was the best way to handle it ever. I loved her for that. <laughs> like, loved oh, it. Shit, I don't have it. Also, TV. we have a second round of bloopers. Oh, second there. round of bloopers, you guys. Bloopers. Bloopers. Um, <laughs> here we go. I think this one even has a little bit of background music, so I'm a little nervous about it, but we'll just see how We're it goes. We're going to go with it. It's, it's very Friday. Quiet. Look at <laughs> Friday. us. Friday. Going crazy. <laughs> Again, this is from our time in radio. For those of you who missed last Friday's blooper reel, hopefully you can go back and check that out. These are different. These are new. Or not new, but like we didn't play them last week. Back when we were young and firm. <laughs> That's right. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. You start. <laughs>
love those. I do too. Those are so fun. I never, ever, ever get enough. I, know, I love them so much. <laughs> and I, it makes me realize how, like, I've had so many different hairstyles. <laughs> I've had a lot of colors, not as many styles. I, think I need to dye my hair again. I know, right? I need to, I know it's hard for me. I would love to grow my hair out again like that. I'm trying so hard, but man, now I'm thinking I need to just like dye it a whole different color because I'm already tired of the hair color. Don't you guys think I should dye it a different color? What do you think? This is what you always do. Uh huh. You yeah. cannot just sit still within your hair. <laughs> I, can't, I can't. I've never been able to sit still in my hair. I know. <laughs> All right, you guys, uh, it is time for double D's. And this one, it is us. Yeah, this is totally us. I, I was like, this is <laughs> my, actually, my husband sent it to me and he's like, this is you. And I'm like, this is us going to meet and greet. <laughs> this is me and Mock. For real. This you is absolutely 100% accurate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm actually going to mute it just because the music. <laughs> That's actually me packing light. I know, right? I actually want to know where to get that. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> if I could, and I'd be like, I could make this a carry on, right? This will fit in the overhead compartment. <laughs> right? I don't know. I mean, that is ideal luggage, honestly. To I me. totally that need is that. Ideal. I need it. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's so perfect. <laughs> so perfect. Right. So me. All right. Just a few talks since we're so over time today. Oh, how we are. It's Friday. Um, it's great. Let me remember what I have. Okay. Can I show you something really gross first? Yes. Like, I've unlocked Always. a new fear. Always. So, this is. Oh my God. Is it bugs? Please tell it me might it's be a bug. bug. It's a bug. Oh God, it's bugs. But you the guys. worst part is that it's a bug in someone's ear. Oh, and it, is no. it is alive. It is alive. So there's hydrogen peroxide. <laughs> and they're like, what is it? What's oh my there? God? Oh my God. Oh my God. Because it bubbles when you put it on blood. Something's going to come out of her ear yeah. and I'm going to freak out. Ah, uh, shit, that's cold. No. <gasps> yeah, it came out. I told you. What came out? <gasps> it's a fucking spider. Oh, shit. Oh. Yeah, it's a spider. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I told you that would come out. That's fucking disgusting. No. Oh, my Jesus. No. <laughs> no. No, 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 <gasps> no. That happened, you guys. That totally Ooh. can happen. How does that happen? How? 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 But at least now you know the cure. Now you know. Ear hydrogen plugs. peroxide. Hydro hydrogen and, and peroxide. And earplugs at night. And earplugs, earplugs, yes. Always wear earplugs at night. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Can you imagine? <sighs> also, uh, if you have a raccoon as a pet, which you should. <laughs> Everybody should, right? Everybody should have a um, raccoon as a pet. I've seen a couple of different raccoon owners who say and who post videos that show this, that raccoons like to sleep in very contained spaces. So even if like people complain, they're like, that looks like you're shoving them into a drawer. No, they like that. They like to be shoved into drawers. That is how they prefer to sleep. Okay. And so look at the most preciousness. Look at this. Look at that. Good morning. Oh my God. Sunshine. That's all cute. big stretch. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, he's so cute. He really is cute. Is it? Um, no offense, I just cannot how, take I mean, really how cute is, that is. He's kind of cute. I hate to admit so it, but he is so, so cute. God, you're gonna get a raccoon. <laughs> now imagine if you will today. This week was tax week, right? We're at yes. the end of tax week. It was, Imagine indeed. being so stupid that you find out you owe a bunch of money for taxes and you blame Trump. Oh, my God. Imagine being that stupid. How, I, how do you I, even I get there? How do you what are the six degrees of separation <laughs> that you have to do to get to that point? I don't even understand. I don't know. But this look at. So we wouldn't file taxes today. We made less money in 2023 than we did 2022. Because of Biden. And we yeah. had to pay taxes this year. Thank you, Donald Trump. What? <laughs> I just saw that and I was like, 
Your math isn't mathing, lady. It's not mathing. Yeah, Jennifer, it is stage four TDS. Like mm -hmm. that's, they need to create a vaccine for that crap. That's oh my what God. the next vaccine should be. And she needs like her 10th booster for it. Oh my God. Because damn, <laughs> how are you that stupid? So stupid. Oh I could, I almost gosh. couldn't believe that. I thought, well, maybe the dates are on. No, she is talking about right now. Like she just made that video this week. Oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. The <laughs> hatred is strong in that one. <laughs> Sue Ritchie, thank you. Sue says, thought gender fluid was something I, th I thought gender fluid was something you did after sex. Only she <laughs> said it a lot of times. <laughs> like, this is the comment. Yeah. I yeah. thought gender fluid was something. I thought gender fluid was something you did after yeah, sex. I thought gender fluid was something you did after sin. <laughs> after, after sex. After sex. That's gross. Can yeah, we just she's talk, talk about that? She's talking about the fluids during sex, if everybody wasn't clear on that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you you're for that welcome. clarification you're welcome you're welcome we uh, appreciate that thanks to close us out for the weekend <laughs> uh the most wonderful this is actually an eclipse story so it's a little bit dated now um but i just love 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 the story and i think you guys will too and it's a good way to start the weekend off right a teacher that promised his class in 1978 that they'd watch the solar eclipse together has fulfilled that promise 46 oh years later and the God. event ended up being much more emotional for him than he ever anticipated in <laughs> 1978 pat moriarty was in his first year teaching junior high school science in webster new york after a lesson on eclipses, he told his class that the next time their town was in the path of a total solar eclipse, he'd host a watch party for all of them. He oh said gosh. that his students looked at him like he was crazy at the time, because the next time that the area would experience a total solar eclipse was in 2024, <sighs> nearly half a century away. Still, Mr. Moriarty continued to invite every single class each year to his future watch party. At the oh time, he God. told them that he'd publish an announcement about it in the newspaper, unless there was a better way to reach people by the time 2024 rolled around. Uh <laughs> he ended up organizing it on social media, and he hoped that just a couple passionate former students might show up. But to his complete surprise, over 100 actually came, oh equipped with gosh. lawn chairs, champagne, and their old yearbooks. Former students traveled from all over the country to attend. And Mr. Moriarty says that the eclipse itself ended up taking a back seat to what this was really all about, and that seeing everyone come together was even more impactful than the rare phenomenon in the sky. A teacher- I, I cannot! <laughs> That is the sweetest thing. Oh my gosh. Isn't it? Oh. Yeah, you know what? You know what I noticed about that is that there wasn't a furry in the joint. <laughs> you know? Right? 1978, people. So great. Uh, I just love, love, so love, love, love that story. So, so, so see, great. we always try to end with some good things, yes, you guys. I love Get you that. Started on your weekend. Yes, it was fantastic. So, so great. Are we done? Are we good? Is that it? That's, it. that's, that's the, the show. show, you that guys. Was, that's those the were show. Talks for today. We're, we're wrapping it up. We're wrapping it up. Okay, we're bringing it in. We're bringing it in. Everybody, everybody, hug. Everybody, get a really, really big hug. Get in there. Get in. Bring it in. Get in here. Come on. If if you're not bringing it in, you need to bring it in. It's bring Friday. It. We bring see it. you. Yeah, we know you're trying not to bring it in, but you got to bring it in. Okay, <laughs> you guys have a fantastic weekend. I'm gonna go get my bacon on. Yeah. Happy anniversary. We, thank you. We'll talk to you guys on Monday. Bye. Bye.